Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. You have made it to Friday. Um, there's a lot of bird, uh, uh, bird noise in the background, so in enjoy that. It's nice to hear, actually. Um, so I want to return to kind of the topic that uh, brought us to do these videos in the first place, which is the novel coronavirus pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. And I want to um, just share and be honest that this was a tough week for me. I'm wondering how others of you are doing and how you're feeling. Um, I think there were, there were a variety of challenges this week. I think just um, hearing the news of the increase in cases across the country, both you know, neighboring states, Wyoming and New Mexico are seeing increases, Wyoming pretty significant increases. Um, you know, we're, we're doing okay in Colorado, but, you know, nationwide things are not going well with, um, with infection rates. And I think the lingering debates about, you know, the things that we can do to care for each other, wear masks, um, the fact that that's become a political debate is really pretty depressing to me personally. Um, but I think the other thing that I've just struggled with this last week and probably the last couple of weeks is in some ways it's felt like, um, the world has gotten a lot smaller. Um, that, you know, the things that I would normally love to do in the summertime are not happening. Um, yesterday I read news that, for those of you who followed me for a while or know me, if know me for a while, you know that like the, the uh, apex of the summer for me is the Feast of St. Rocco's in North Denver, which is a very old uh, feast outdoor festival, um, and I just love it to pieces, and found out that that's canceled. Um, wasn't, su wasn't surprising, but it was just really disappointing. So for the first time, I think in five years, I'll actually have to go out and buy olive oil instead of gamble for olive oil. Um, but there's just other things that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little more extroverted, and so working from home has been a challenge to my mental health, um, to my sense of connection to others. Um, and so many other things, you know, little trips that we had hoped we could do this summer, uh, but can't, um, because, you know, camping facilities are closed or where we wanted to go is not accepting guests right now. It just felt like the world has gotten a little smaller. And in some ways, um, that has, um, felt challenging and difficult. But, you know, as, at the same time, I actually re was reflecting that some of it is, ha, has been, there's been moments of joy as well. So, you know, the walks I've been taking have been much, much closer to home and really just in our neighborhood. And I've discovered uh, some really beautiful rose bushes that neighbors have that smell glorious that I've never noticed before because I uh, didn't um, walk you know, in, in, the, in, in my neighborhood, I would, I would go to a nearby lake or something. And so in that regard, it's actually been nice to kind of just see the neighborhood and connect there. But in other ways, it's just, it's just felt like things have, have gotten, the world's kind of closed in a bit and for me, as, as, what, it, as what, it, what it has felt like. Um, and th but then I also watched a, um, listened to an interview that Terry Gross did recently with an epidemiologist out of the University of Minnesota. This epidemiologist, um, and I'll share the link to the interview because I actually think it was, it was, it was great. Uh, I learned some new things about the virus. He um, shared some really helpful information. And part of, I think, the feeling of um, difficulty and challenge these last couple of weeks and feeling like the wor world has gotten a little bit smaller um, is because we don't have really good, reliable information. And so anyway, this interview was very helpful. But I liked one thing that um, the epidemiologist, the doctor said at the end of the interview, he said, um, he's really encouraging people to not use the phrase uh, socially distanced, but instead physical distanced. So to have a physically distanced um, dinner outdoors or to you know, uh, emphasize physically distanced activity, that that's what we're really uh, needing to prevent uh, spread of the infection is some physical space between people. Um, what we don't need is further social distance, further disconnection from those networks, family members, friends, um, activities that um, help us feel a part of a community and a, and a greater uh, a greater good or a greater whole. Um, and I, that is not necessarily a revolutionary thought that he shared, but it was something that actually um, gave me pause and caused me to kind of shift my thinking a little bit 
Um, so we had a physically distanced uh, meal with some family members last night, two family members, and that felt um, so good. Uh, to you know, be near enough to still hear each other's voices and see each other's faces. Um, but the other thing that the epidemiologist said is that you know because it's so challenging right now, we need to emphasize social connections. So don't talk about socially distanced. Talk about physical, di physically distancing things. And he said um, we really need to emphasize kindness right now. And I could not have agreed more with that message. And so. Um, it gave me a challenge in my walk to think about can I take some some acts of radical kindness, and I really think that's what it's going to take right now are radical acts of kindness. Um, so I invite you, as I invite myself, to think about that. Where can you share kindness with somebody else um, over this weekend or this next week? I think there's actually some urgency in doing so. Maybe you deliver a meal to somebody, or pick up takeout for somebody and just surprise them and, and take it to them, or drop off some flowers or some home-baked treats or send somebody a note. What, whatever I think we can do to share and spread some kindness is so critical. Um, the other thing that I think uh, we could do is I, I was at a meeting yesterday with the head of the Asian Chamber of Commerce here for the Metro Denver area and heard how um, really desperate things are for Asian-owned and operated businesses. Um, that they, they've lost so much business because of people's uh, fears about the, the virus and association of, um, of Asian people as the source and the cause and, and the problem of the, of the virus. So I think one act of kindness we could show this weekend, this next week, is do business with an Asian-owned and operated business, a restaurant, a landscaping company, a car wash. There's an Asian-owned car wash on County Line Road that somebody told me about yesterday. Um, Show some kindness and solidarity and love with those business owners if you're able. Um, there's also some really great lists of black-owned and operated businesses in the Metro Denver area that you can find at 303 Magazine or maybe it was 5280 Magazine. But uh, show some love to those businesses too. That those are acts of kindness as well. We can we can show kindness and how we how we spend our dollars as well as other acts of kindness. So. Um, so my, my bottom line that I'm taking away or taking with me into the weekend is don't talk about being socially distanced. I think that creates a lot of anxiety and heartache and, and uh, sorrow, really, to think that we're socially distant from each other. Talk about the best way we can protect each other is to create some physical distance, physical space between each other. That's really what we're talking about. And um, let's emphasize some radical acts of kindness. Um, let's think big and try to take action. If you do take action and you want to share that story, share it with us on our, on our daily reflections or on our church um, Facebook page. It would be good to know what, um, what you're doing and maybe your ideas would help inspire others. Okay, I think I've uh, shared, shared long enough, babbled on a little bit. So thank you all for listening. Um, I know this is a difficult time, but together we'll, we will get through it. We are getting through it. And I send you all um, just really warm wishes for the weekend. Bye-bye.